All right, uh, hi all. Um, uh, this is Mark Dodd from Mark Dodd Photography, and tonight I am going to go over just showing you some of the interface changes in the new Aurora 2019 compared to Aurora 2018, just to show you what the differences are. Um, I won't go into processing much on this one. I just want to make this one a short video of the um, new interface changes and uh, new options that you can get in Aurora 2019. So let's just get right into showing you both of them here. And before I get started, just to keep everybody happy, I am an affiliate of Skyloom Software, the makers of Aurora um, HDR 2018 and 2019. Um, just have to let you know that just to keep everybody happy. So what I've got here on the left is Aurora 2018 and on the right is the new Aurora 2019. So we will go ahead and just open up a sample image so we get all the menus. On the opening dialog it's pretty much the same. You still have ghost reduction, chromatic aberration removal, and I'm just going to choose alignment. I pretty much recommend choosing alignment no matter what you do even if you have it on a tripod it could have moved slightly and this will align your images so I'm going to go ahead and open that up in 2018 and I'll open up the sample image in 2019. Again I'll just choose auto alignment. The new one gets a little fancy it actually tells you what it's doing why it's opening up the image. Um, this is running on an older iMac from 2011 and I'm also recording on this so it is a little bit slower than it may be by itself on a newer machine. So all right, so we've got the two images up here. But let's just go across the top that we have first. Let me just slide this over so we can compare. They're pretty much the same. We've still got the open. So you've got open images and your batch processing options. You've got your size fit to screen or choosing the zoom level that you want. Or you can use the plus and minus. You still have the quick look at the original versus the adjusted in Aurora and then you can do the split view if you'd like to do the split view option instead. And again you still have the undo command. Both of them have the history command. I, since I haven't done anything yet there really is no history yet so I can't click on those. And then you've got the still got the crop tool on both of these. Let me slide this one over now. Um, so let's click done on that. Again, you, you still got the, for Aurora 18, they called them presets. So that would bring up your preset panel down here at the bottom to show you the different presets that you have. Um, this is the sets that I have. I purchased a few extras from, from Trey, but uh, this is what comes with 2018. But in 2019, they've actually renamed it. They've now called it the looks panel. I think this is a more appropriate name for it because really you're, you're changing the look of the image so that makes more sense um, to call it looks. So they've called it looks so if you want to bring that panel up that's what this button does and this shows and hides the filter menu on the right. Well, let's go through the different menus that we have. Um, first one We've still got HDR basic in both, so let me expand both of those. But the one difference you will see is this HDR enhance from the 2018 version is missing from the 2019 version. There is a reason for that. If you didn't catch it already, it is now down as its own independent filter. Um, there is a reason for that, and we will get down to that in a second here. So let's just close those two for the moment. We still have the color filter structure um, is missing from over here but that's because it's part of the new HDR enhanced filter itself. So here's your smart structure and your microstructure settings that you would have been able to do in the previous HDR structure section and here's your uh, HDR clarity. So they've broken down the HDR Enhance into the separate pieces. Um, the one slider over here in the older version would adjust all of those for you. They've now given you a bit more control over the individual pieces that you can control. So that's why they've broken it out into a separate HDR Enhance option. 
<coughs> excuse me. So let's hide this again. So we still have denoise. We still have image radiance, polarize, HDR, details, boost, glow. Top and bop, bottom tuning has been renamed to adjustable gradient. Um, it is a more appropriate title because it really is a gradient tool is what it is. But not only have they changed the name, as you can see over here, they've added two options that you can control. You can now control highlights and shadows in this adjustable gradient. But as you can see, they still have the top and bottom sections that uh, get adjusted. That refers to when you go ahead and set the orientation and put your gradient in your picture. By default, this is the top. So anything that you adjust in this section will affect the top part of the image. So if like we go ahead and just for example, we'll boost the exposure way up. So that's happening just to the top because I was in the top section of this adjustable gradient. The one thing to, to uh, keep in mind, this gradient can be rotated. As you can see here, uh, one mistake I have done in the past is I accidentally rotated it 180 degrees and was making adjustments to what I thought was the top and it was making it in the bottom and I was going, why is it doing that? It wasn't until I rotated my adjustment again that I realized that I had rotated it 180 degrees. So just be careful of that. But again, now if we switch to the bottom, we can make adjustments to just the bottom part. And as before, you can shrink or expand the uh, change zones um, for this filter. But it is now called the adjustable gradient versus top and bottom. But you're still affecting the top and bottom of the image or left and right, depending upon how you rotated it. Still have the tone curve, HSL, color toning, dodge and burn, and vignette. vignette. Those are pretty much the same. They have not changed. They're still the same functions that you had before. And we'll actually just open up a few of these just to make sure. Yes. All right. One other new option that you have in Aurora 2019 is you can now do LUT mapping. They're similar to looks um, in that you can choose your particular LUT that you would like to apply. Um, it comes with these default settings. LUTs that you can use and LUT stands for lookup table. Um, from what I understand it's come from the film industry and in in that they had custom looks that they defined and they've defined it in this format called LUT files. Um, you can make your own uh, although I have not done that yet and I'm not exactly sure how you would go about doing that. You would not do it in this program you'd have to do it in another one. But as you can see you can download new LUT files. You can find LUT files for a variety of different looks that you can download from the internet and you can actually add it to Aurora 2019 and now use that custom look for your image by adding it to the, the, uh, the LUTs menu that you have over here. But just like the looks when you hover over it, in this case it actually changes the um, main image on the screen when you go over the different LUTs to see what the look looks like versus when you're down here in the looks you can actually see what the image may look like for that particular look by looking at the looks panel itself that you have down here which is similar to what you had in 2018. But just like the, the, the um, what's now called looks where you could apply a look you could then make an adjustment of how much of that look you want applied. You can still do that with the LUT mapping tool by choosing the amount that you have applied to it. So, but as before, if you want to see what this filter looks like before and after, you can click the eye icon and that will show you. When you turn it off, that shows you what it was before. When you turn it on, that shows you what your image looks like with that particular filter now applied to it. One more thing that they've added to the new version. Actually, let me go and hide the old one because we're just dealing with 2019 at this point. 
this, we now have additional plugins that we can add. Um, they've now made it so that you can add Photoshop plugins and use those from within Aurora 2019. So if you happen to go out and get the um, Nick collection while they were free back then, you are now able to use the, the, the Nick collection of filters as a plugin to Aurora 2019. Once you've chosen one from this menu, it will actually add the most recent ones you used up here. So like I actually tried to use this one before. So actually we'll run that right now just to see what it does and give you an idea. So it's now actually processing the image and it's gonna go ahead and open it up inside of Silver Effects. And no, I don't want the new version. So now we're in actually the Silver Effects application. We can go ahead and do whatever we wanted to do with inside, excuse me, inside Silver Effects. And when we choose OK, it will save the image back into Aurora 2019. This pretty much goes the same for any of the other Photoshop plugins that you have. So now it's processing. Yep, there we go. And there's my Silver Effects image. If, if you've done that and you realize it's like, no, I didn't like what that plugin did, you can always go up to your history menu here and either go back a step or if you notice it now, put that Silver Effects plugin adjustment as its own layer or I can just turn that off to see what it looked like before. And if I don't like it at all, I can remove it over here. I can remove that layer. They still have all the layer options that you had in 2018 and the new 2019. Um, the biggest thing that they've done is they've changed the um, image engine that's running behind Aurora 2019. The developers did a lot to improve performance. Um, for my playing with it so far, even on this older machine, it is, I swear, almost twice as fast on some things as the previous version. There are a few times where I would make an adjustment and I would pretty much walk away and then come back and wait for it to finish. I don't have to do that now. Um, that seems, for me, that seems to apply when you start adding a whole lot of layers. On the previous version, 2018, it would, the more layers you had, the slower it got. So far from my playing with the 2019, as I add layers or I add a new adjustment layer or a new image layer and make my adjustments there. So let's just go choose HDR Enhance from this one just to play with it, just to see. We'll add another layer, another adjustment layer. Normally you, you wouldn't have to do all of these as separate layers, but I have a tendency to do that. <coughs> Excuse me as I, I like to keep um, a lot of my adjustments separate just in case I want to turn them on or off just to see what they look like. So let's choose a, a LUT on this one. So we'll choose Calm. Why not? And that looks horrible, but <laughs> let's choose something else. And we'll choose Cool on this one. All right. Like it normally you would have seen the image processing down here on the older version on this one as you just saw it, it did not do that at all it is a little slow because I'm recording on this machine at the same time but uh, that's pretty much a quick overview of most of the new interface features inside of Aurora 2019 oh I should mention you still have the option to, to export your pictures like you did before and you can open it up in any one of your other photo apps that you happen to have like Luminaire or if you happen to have Photoshop um, or you can even take it back into Lightroom through this method and then you can also go to your favorite um, sharing site like Flickr, SmugMug or 500 pics. That's still the same. That's pretty much the same. But that's a quick overview of Aurora 2019's interface comparing it to 2018 and the product is going to be released on October 1st 2018 and it will be available for pre-order now. Um, 
Like I said, I, don't know if I am an affiliate of Skyloom Software, so I would greatly appreciate it if you would click the link below this video. You can go there and you can actually download a free trial of the software or if you want to uh, get the discount why it's being discounted during the pre-order, you can also order it at that time. But thank you very much. And we'll do another, some other videos with some showing some of the editing, editing techniques in the future, I hope. So I will talk to you later. Bye.